shit here in Boston. There's never been a like the public office. That's okay, I won't stop. I'll keep campaigning, because I love the great taxpayers of this city, and I want their taxes to pay my bills, everybody. Now, if I'm elected mayor of Boston, I promise a bean in every pot. Boston <laughs> cream pie on every table, and a duck boat in every garage. What do you say? Yay. Duck boats for everybody. Yay. Okay, all right. We're gonna drive around, wave around, get some boats. We're gonna take this duck here, Bertha, right, the duck right. around town, sail the city streets, and we're gonna splash into the water. All right, everybody, so sit tight. Please remain seated at all times. Don't drink any smoke on the bad stuff here as we roll around. And welcome to Boston, everybody. Thanks for coming Yay. down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go. I'll say hi to Julia, by the way. Julia's gonna be sailing us around the city streets. Hi, hi Julia, how are you today? Doing well, there it is. Two thumbs up. Well, this city here is a city of Boston, a city of freedom, a city of fun, and a city of firsts. And most of all, a city of freedom, home to the American Revolution. The American Revolution all started right around here. But the early settlers, the Puritans who came here from England, they were looking for religious freedom and economic opportunity. They showed up here in 1630, and back then Boston looked a lot different. Back in 1630, Boston was like an island back then. You look at the old maps, the old city. Boston was like this little island connected by a little thin strip of land to the rest of the mainland. It looked like a fist going back to the mother country. Now, through the years, the city's been filled out and filled in. Boston's a lot bigger than what it used to be. Over 3,000 acres of the city is landfilled. It used to be underwater at one time. Uh, look over there in that corner. You see what happened right over there at 1630? You know what happened right over there? There's nothing happened over there, nothing at all, because that was all swamps and water. Everything around us here, this whole area, every, everything around us all used to be underwater. This whole area here was filled in. This neighborhood, yeah, it's called the Back Bay. That's the name of this neighborhood. The reason why they call it Back Bay is because all this used to be a bay. All used to be part of the river, and a big bay that opened up behind the city. There. The river's down this way about five blocks, but it used to be right underneath their feet. It used to go past that way another three or four blocks out that way. So they've all been filled in. A lot of parts of the city that where that happened, I'll try to point out some of the spots around town as we go around. There used to be old shorelines, used to be the old beach, things like that, and parts of the river. So. There used to be more hills in Boston. They were torn down through the years. More hills that were knocked down. They used dirt to fill in. They used a lot of trash. They used a lot of dirt knocking down the hills, pushing it out to the river and to the ocean to make more living space. Now, of course, the Native Americans were here before the Puritans. You had the Massachusetts tribe. The Massachusetts were a small tribe that spoke the Algonquin language. They were right around this area. They used to fish in the rivers and the harbors in the summer. In the winter, they head back to the hills, the big hills west of the city. Their name Massachusetts literally meant people of the hills. That's basically what Massachusetts means. Land of many hills. People of the great blue hills. Or hillbillies or something like that. But all filled in. We got a couple of leaks we're trying to fix, though. Under my administration, we'll take care of these leaks, folks. Let me tell you. Splash around in there later. It's out by the Christian Science Mother Church. You may see the dome of the church as we go past the next building over here in just a minute. That church was founded by Mary Baker Eddy in the 1880s. Christian Science, it's different than Scientology. They believe in faith healing. Val Kilmer, the actor, he's a Christian scientist. He never goes to the doctor. He goes to the doctor. Well, sister dragged him. Oh, very good. See about the dome of the church. I think that dome is a pipe organ that has close to 14,000 pipes. Wow. Yeah. One of the largest pipe organs in West Coast. Now this is the new third tallest building in the city going up right over here on the left. It's called One Dalton. It's going to be a Four Seasons Hotel and a bunch of condominiums. They're almost done with it. They already sold the penthouse all last year. You already missed the penthouse. Sorry about that. Anybody guess how much the penthouse went for all the way up top? No. Uh, double that. What's that? Forty million dollars. Yeah. Forty two. Forty million. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Michael Dell, the computer guy, he's the one who got up there. You ever seen Dell computer? Now underneath us is a highway, Interstate 90. This is the longest highway in America, 3,101 miles. It goes from Boston's Logan Airport all the way out through Chicago, all the way out to Seattle, Washington. You can see Seattle out there. You see it there? <laughs> Luckily, the world's nice and flat, so it's easy to see far away. Right? All the way out there, longest highway in America. Actually, the longest route in America is two blocks over Route 20, right up Com Ave. Then it, and it goes all the way out to Oregon. It's about 3,600. Oh, <laughs> Look at this fire station. This is the second oldest fire station in the city. Ladder 15, inch of 33. Some of the smallest trucks in the city, just so they can squeeze into that building. They used to have horses and carriages pulling the fire. 
Love Going down Boylston Street, the Street of Champions. This yes. way we'll take parades down or championship teams like the New England Patriots. Yay. Yay. The Boston Red Sox. Yay. The Boston Celtics. Yay. And the Bruins. Oh. Yay. Almost go the Bruins. Oh. We almost had another parade a couple weeks ago. Almost. Almost. A lot of shopping and bars and taverns and stuff. You got the, uh, the Italy's over here. It's great Italian yeah. food all tucked away in there. And you get the provincial. Look at this Apple store coming up. I only mention this because it's almost entirely made out of glass. Look at the glass staircase. Inside is a spiral staircase. Almost entirely made out of glass. Right down this road runs the Boston Marathon, the world's yep. oldest annual marathon race. Starts out in the suburbs on Hopkinton, Massachusetts. Runs 26.2 miles right down here into the city. We're gonna go over the finish line in just a minute. Nice. Yeah. A lot of famous runners in the marathon through the years. You had Johnny Kelly, who ran until he was 86 oh, yeah. years old. He ran over 60 Boston Marathon. Yeah. yeah. Johnny Kelly. Wow. Yeah, Jeffrey Mutai at Kenya. He set the record at two hours, three minutes, and two seconds. Wow. Two hours, three minutes, two seconds, 26 points. Then you had Rosie Ruiz back in 1980. She was great at the end of the race. They were crowding yeah. everything else, and somebody came out of the crowd and said, Hey, you were just on the subway a few minutes ago. She cheated. Yeah. She jumped out of the subway train down by the baseball park, down by Fenway Park, jumped into the race, won the marathon. Then they found out during New York City Marathon, she did the same thing. And they disqualified for both. Really? Oh. All right, the finish line. Look down on the street. On either side, down on the street, on either side, see if you can swap the finish line. It was across the finish line. Yeah. Boston's Public Library, the oldest public lending library in the United States. The first lender of books for free in the public. There's the tallest building in the city. Yep. John Hancock Tower, about 60 stories, about 10,000 plus panes of glass. There was a guy who caught a grape off the top of that building, caught the grape on the bottom of his mouth, setting the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest oh. grape drop into somebody's mouth, 790 feet, all the way up to the top there. Oh. You he said it hurt a little bit, he was still talking, so. He's still talking, yeah, but he caught it with his mouth all the way from the top, so he dropped it all the way from the ground. I am Pei, yeah, I am Pei, who just recently passed away. He had a hand in a lot of buildings. What's that? Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the two buildings by the Christian Science Church over there, the MIT building, the Green building with the ball out there. Yeah, I am Pei. Yeah, we get a little father's Kennedy, Kennedy Library, yeah, we're in the waterfront with the black and the white, yeah. yeah. This is a Trinity Church, by the way, the masterpiece of architecture of Henry Hobson Richardson from Louisiana. He studied architecture at Harvard. He's said to be his masterpiece. A lot of TV shows filmed around Boston through the years. There's that show Boston Legal with William Shatner and James Spader. Here's the entrances to Crane and Associates from the show. Remember the beginning? They showed Here's the happy place. You want to pay 30 bucks to do it, take a bunch of selfies inside. You can do that later. Here's the old Natural History Museum. Nowadays, it's a restoration hardware. If you want to buy a ten thousand dollar couch, you can buy it in there. Yeah, I am Pei, the architect. He's from Hong Kong, and uh, Jackie Kennedy. When John Fitzgerald Kennedy passed away, Jackie wanted I am Pei to do the Kennedy Library down there because both uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy and I am Pei both have the same. They're both, both, both born in the same year. There, so oh. kind of be a, you know, somehow that makes sense. Yeah, so. I don't know if they had the same birthday. I think he was jumping on anything. But anyways, next block over is Newbury Street, all kinds of high-end shopping on Newbury Street. Next block after that, you have the mall, but it's not a shopping mall, it's a mall of trees. It's called the Commonwealth Mall, part of the Emerald Necklace of Boston, part of the 12-mile series of parks that stretch around the city. It kind of looks like the Perry and the big white boulevards in the park right in the middle over there. Let's see a little bit on the way back. There's an Emerald Necklace around Boston. 12 mile series of parks. You start with Boston Common, you're going to see in a second the public gardens. Connects with the Commonwealth Mall. Connects with the Fens. It goes by Fenway Park. The reason why they call it Fenway, Fenway, that word Fens is an old English word for swamp or a marsh. So what do you do? Yeah, Fens. It's a swamp. That's what they do. Now the first thing they filled in with these public gardens. Boston's public gardens. The oldest public botanical gardens in the United States. You stand right over there. Swamp the city was trying to haul the snow out of the city, plowing it into trucks, taking it out of town, and then just dumping it somewhere else. And there were massive snow piles all around Boston, huge snow piles. There was one snow pile over in Southie, 
at one point that snow pile was a city block wide and it was 60 feet tall. And that glacier didn't finish melting until July 14th of that year, so the whole thing finally disappeared all together. July 14th. They found all kinds of stuff in it too. They got plowed up into it by accident. They found four fire hydrants in the snow pile. Four fire hydrants. No bodies though, so that was good. Hey, there's baby ducklings. They're in there. Fourth of July gear. You see him out there past that guy sitting along the fence? Like, Boom! The book. Yeah, it's great. Well, this is where it all took place. This is where the police all came out to hold up the traffic. It was right here. Officer Mike called in the police. And they all stopped the traffic on this street, on uh, that street. So Mrs. Mallet and her baby ducks can get across and go over to that water. That's where we were going. So look at the book again when you see it. You'll see the spot exactly like it was. Because back then, all the buildings still look the same. Now heading up Beacon Hill next, you, the beach used to be right here. This street we're on right now is Charles Street. This used to be the banks of the Charles River. So everything out this way is the old part of Boston. Everything out this way was filled in mid-1800s. This hill, Beacon Hill, going up next used to be 60 feet taller. It used to be three hills. The Native Americans used to love this spot, the Massachusetts, because back in the day the, when the hill was bigger, there used to be freshwater springs bubbling up out of the bottom of the hill. The Massachusetts called Boston shamans, which meant living waters. It wasn't just because of the good fishing that was all around, because of the springs. It was hard to find fresh water around here because there weren't too many lakes on the old peninsula. Plus, uh, it was all salt water all around the ocean over here. The, even the river was salty for a good four miles up. It was a tidal zone. Brackish water. Well, they created down this hill here to make it easier to build on in the 1790s. They started building these mansions going back to the early 1800s. Gas lamps lying in the streets. Look at the ironworks around the window. have lawns in three years they squeezed in other ones like that little one that went for 14 million back in 2006. It's about 40,000 square feet though it goes back. Look down the driveway you see the old horse stables converted into condominiums. Oh my god. The Froggy Pond. Oh. You're gonna have a big fountain shoot my baby and we'll splash in here later on. In the summer and the winter it's an ice skating right they freeze it up and go ice skating. This hill used to be 60 feet taller, it used to be three hills. The old Puritans in the 1630s, they erected a big pole up on top of the hill with a bucket filled with tar and pitch. And they could light that bucket on fire as a beacon to warn the countryside. If they saw pirates sailing into the harbor to ransack the city, or if they saw the French, ah, they never let the bucket. The French called Boston Tremont, uh, Tremontaine because there were three distinct hills. You see, when the early explorer Champlain sailed into Boston Harbor, he saw the three hills, and he called it Tremont. And then he saw Tremont Street down there. Well, in the 1790s, they decided to grade down this hill to make it easier to build on. It's a lot steeper in spots. So they got shovels and donkeys and carts and Irish to take off the top of the hill. They used the dirt from the top of this hill to fill in down where the Boston Garden is, where the sports arena with the Celtics and the Bruins play. That all used to be underwater. That was filled in with the top of this hill. Then they started building the state capital building in Massachusetts. You can't miss it over here on the left. But it's 23 and a half carry gold building. That's where our governor, Charlie Baker, sits. So you can spot Kennedy up on top of the stairs. Oh, yeah. All the way up there. Well, he never served in the building. He was a congressman, a senator, and a president. Yeah, Did you have a trolley? Yeah. Don't miss this statue on the right either. Statue of the 54th Regiment of the United States Army. You saw that movie Glory depicted the 54th. The first all black regiment to be raised by the United States Army to volunteer to be fighting the Civil War. Took Augustus St. Good on 14 years to carve that statue. 14 years. Take tours of the state house here in the uh, Hooker entrance, the uh, General Hooker entrance, named of the fight Joe Hooker, Civil War. Statue here of Mary Dwyer. Now, Mary Dwyer, she was a Quaker in Puritan Boston. The Puritans came here for religious freedom, but they wouldn't let anybody else practice their religion. They kicked her out of Boston three times. She kept coming back. She came back the fourth time, but she was hanged in Boston. Mary Dwyer would stand and she would die for her beliefs. The founding fathers would think of her story when they write up the Constitution with freedom of religion for all of this country. Off to the left, you see the Firefighters Memorial. Kind of looks like Charlie's Angels. <laughs> this is the closest thing to Disneyland we're going to get on the tour here. Down the north slope of Beacon Hill. Very heads up, folks. Here we go. Roller coaster. Roller coaster. Yeah, Suffolk University. Yeah, it's a big law school for the most part. There you guys go to Suffolk. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Big law school, big history school. All the gas lamps lying on the streets. Wow. Uh, 2,300 gas lamps here in the city. Most of them lit all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's just cheaper to keep them going all the time than to pay people to go around and turn them off. It's always leaving. 
Well, there's the only Dunkin' Donuts in Boston, right there. <laughs> only Dunkin' Donuts in America. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're looking for. Now, Boston is a city of firsts. City of firsts. Who likes chocolate? Anybody like chocolate? Chocolate? Yeah. yeah. Well, the first chocolate factory in the United States had it right here in Boston called Baker's Chocolate. It's 1780. Baker's Chocolate's still around today. Look at this. How about jelly beans? Anybody like jelly beans? Jelly beans are invented in Boston by Shrouds Candy, jelly beans. Marshmallows, too. How about property taxes? Yeah, they're enacted here in the States. Here I have the colonies here in Boston. Also, the telephone. Yeah, who invented the telephone? Telephone. Alexander Graham Bell, that's right. Wow. Alexander Graham Bell, that's right. I had a kid last week say Steve Jobs, so I just want to make sure. Oh. <laughs> Alexander Graham Bell, he was working for Boston University back in the 1870s. He had a laboratory just a couple blocks from here. He was working on a device to help deaf people learn how to speak. His mother was deaf, actually. Well, instead he came up with a telephone right here in Boston. The first phone call ever made by Alexander Graham Bell, just a couple blocks. A little help from Watson. Don't forget the Italians, Mucci and Marconi, they had a little hand in the way. Also the Frappuccino, anybody like a Frappuccino at Starbucks? Frappuccino? Welcome to the caffeine, they have a caffeine. Now Starbucks started out in Seattle, Washington, but the Frappuccino started here in Boston. There was an old coffee shop here in the 80s, early 90s, called the Coffee Connection. And they invented the Frappuccino. Mark Marin, the comedian, he used to work there. So, well, Starbucks came in in the 90s, yeah, and they bought up all their storefronts. They wanted all their storefronts. They bought some of their recipes. They took their recipe for the Frappuccino, they spread it all over the Frappuccino, too. Here in the mid 50s, early 60s, made way for beautiful buildings like this one, the Hurley Building. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at yeah. Fine example of brutalism. Saw that movie, The Departed, with Jack Nicholson, Leonardo DiCaprio. That was the state police headquarters. Well, they knocked down all this area, the old tenements, except for one, straight on ahead of us. You see an iPhone sign on the side of the structure. An iPhone sign up ahead of us sits on the side of the last remaining tenement house in the old West End of Boston. This building here used to be right in the middle of a bunch of row houses that used to stretch about 20 feet. What do you say? Oh. Tore down all the others, but the owners managed to keep this one up. People still live here, right in the middle of the road. It's a set of condos. Every time they raise their property taxes, they just get a bigger iPhone sign for the side of the building. So it worked out pretty good. If you do an Airbnb in there, that goes anywhere from 150 a night to 250 a night. No, right not now. We're getting close. Yeah, yeah, right over there, that's where the bridge goes Whoa. over at the river, so we're getting really close to the river in just a second. So a lot of changes in construction through the years. We put new tunnels underneath the city, highway tunnels. You're going to see one of the exits for the tunnels. Off over here on the right, uh, on the left, coming in just a second. Everybody that goes to the old tenement homes. the tunnels over there. They tore down the old bridge in town and built the new bridge, the Leonard Zakem Bunker Hill Bridge. Crown Jewel, the big dig of Boston, the widest cable stay bridge in the United States. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's North Station where all the trains go, all the trains go north. Oh, excuse me. That bridge opened up in 2002. They had 14 elephants on the Ringling Brothers Bottom of Bailey Circus cross the bridge to see if it was safe. They say the elephants can tell if something's going to collapse, they won't cross it. That the elephants have some sort of uncanny sense of vibration. Say in the old days, over the London Bridge, over Brooklyn Bridge, they sent over elephants first. They say it wasn't because of their weight, but they say the elephants won't cross something they think is going to collapse. Now the elephants made it across the bridge at the ceremony, everybody on the bridge is safe. Just when I got to the new tunnels, that's when I turned around and ran out as fast as possible. That's where I got my jump for it. Had some leaks earlier, had some other issues, but it's doing better lately, so. There's the river, yep, the Charles River, everybody gonna be splashing in in just a second. I know it's Oh, and there's the, oh, there's those the geese? death boat right there. Oh, he's in, yeah. They call us Hilda. Oh, he can Hilda. Hilda, huh? Hilda the duck. There's those they geese, though. Stay away from those Canada geese. They're like the raptors out of Jurassic Park, right? They're being yeah. in the yeah. Fertilizing lawns all up and down the east coast. Slipping and slide, really. Yeah. As subway train comes out of the ground over here, we call the subways the T, it's short for the MBTA, Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority, called the T for short. Subways are kind of color-coded to help you get around a little bit. The green line takes you by all the parks. Goes down here, this is Science Park, Boston Common, Fenway Park, goes out to the suburbs. On the green line, yeah, it's right down there by the hotel. Yeah. The blue line takes you to the water, takes you to the ocean, takes you to the aquarium. Goes ahead to Myrtle the sea turtle. She's a 90-year-old turtle, she runs the tank. 
You put too many sharks in the tank. Three years ago, she was banging into the sharks, biting all the tails, eating all the food. They had to separate, and the sharks almost died. So you don't mess a hurdle the turtle. The red line will take you to Harvard. Harvard's colors are red or crimson, so don't you have the red line. It's kind of a color coat. Yeah. The orange line goes down what was the old neck of Boston. The orange line. Well, originally that were that neck of Boston. It used to be an orange street named after William and Mary of Orange, the old Protestant king and queen. But then when Washington marched in, they call it Washington Street. And the orange line train follows Washington Street, which used to be orange. Street. So that's what the orange line. And the silver line is the future. That's the new one they, had, they built during the big day. It was supposed to be a train, but then they ran out of money, so it's just a bus. They're supposed to bus. <laughs> Yeah, the cash. I like the uh, the high tech safety equipment they have underneath the bridge. You catch any falling rocks here, the nets here. It's very high tech here. It's just, yeah. Well, very high tech. It's kind of like a hall of mirrors. They have a view down there. Yeah. They have right. an interesting view Looking going all the way down. Yeah. yeah. You saw Myrtle the turtle at the aquarium. Yeah. See the seals and the penguins too. Yeah. yeah. She's big. She's older than the aquarium. She's 90 years old. More than wow. 90. Myrtle the turtle. The sea turtle. She's 90. She something is. like 90 to 4 or something like that. Yeah. Wow. We don't really know. Somewhere over 90. But she runs the tank. As we cross over the bridge, look out in the distance. You see the Bunker Hill Monument out there. It looks like the Washington Monument, but it's older than the Washington Monument. That's the site of the bloodiest battle of the American Revolution. The Battle of Bunker Hill. This T-Rex over here. T-Rex on from the Museum of Science. Oh, wow. Down the south side of the museum. Big lightning room in here. IMAX theater, plane of terror. We have a 4D theater in here as well. Four dimensional theater. Show movies like the Polar Express with Tom Hanks. They get on a train to go to the North Pole to blow snow on you during the movie. They have a snow machine. Oh, and they have smell of vision Smell of vision something like that. If anyone has a people sit next to it. Welcome to Cambridge now, everybody. Down the city of Cambridge, home to the oldest college in America, Harvard University. 1636, Harvard opened. About a mile and a half down the road down that way. Originally, it was just called the college, the new college. In 1638, a wealthy minister named John Harvard passed away, and then his will, he donated all of his library and half the value of his estate to the college, and they named it after him, Harvard College, 1638. A lot of colleges all around here. You draw a circle around Boston, about 20 mile radius. You have about 58 colleges, universities, and schools of higher learning in and around the city. 58. This college over here is a lot of I like the newer building here at Education First. It looks like a waterfall, a glass cascading down the side of the building. Oh, yeah, I got hit by lightning. All right, everybody, we're campaigning on the ducks. We better be ready to quack. I've lost four campaigns to make a count. Every time I lose, I want a recount. When I say I want a recount, I want to hear a quack, quack. You guys ready? Ready. All right, come. Yeah. Recount. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. Very good. Quack, quack, quack. Crikey, ladies and gentlemen, here on the ride, you'll see skateboarders in their natural habitat. Shh, listen close. You can hear they call it a dude. Bro. There's a new skate park here in Cambridge, Lynch Family Skate Park, one of the biggest in the United States. Here comes the train! Whoa! Oh, All right, everybody, we're on a Coast Guard regulated duck bird flight here. We got a safety message before we got into the water. In case of an emergency, we have life vests ripping on board. Little life vests for the kids up top here, adult life vests over there for those who are over 75 pounds. Life ring in the front, life ring in the back. Fire extinguisher in the front, fire extinguisher in the back, plenty of fire suppression equipment. Talk to the bolts in the Coast Guard here with all kinds of communications equipment. All right, Julie, how's it looking? Pretty good so far. All right, Julie, here we go. Yeah, a lot of All right. Now, before we go in the water, we're going to need six people to get out real quick and take the wheels off real quick. All right, that's all. Oh, yeah, it's snowing now. Look, it's snowing. All right, here we go. Don't breathe. What are you doing? Ready? Are you guys ready? Go pull the horn. Ready? Ready?
So far we're floating. Here we go, folks. Right up the chart. Wow. How's it looking here? Good. All good? All right, excuse me real quick. I'm just going to call the boss real quick. Then.
DJ and counterweights on the 58 floor are going to keep shifting as much. People are getting seasick up on top of the building. Oh. Around. The second tallest building is a Prudential out there by the end of the bridge in the antenna. No one has the tallest public observatory, Skywalk on the 50th floor. We go all the way up top, there's a restaurant called Top of the Hub Restaurant. Go up there get a nice bottle of Bud Light Lime for nine bucks, get a nice drink. Yeah. It's not that bad. The food's pretty good up there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It could be a tourist trap, it's pretty good. Yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. Bridge out there, Longfellow Bridge, you just clean the whole thing up with the last four years. Yacht. I don't think you can see that, the white one, the uh, inflatable white one right over there. Yeah, are there any kids on board who want to drive the duck by any chance? Any kids want to come up and drive the duck? Anybody want to drive? Anybody want to drive? Oh, 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 hold oh, on. Oh, oh. Okay, here they end up first here. Right? You can go up next here. One second. Oh. Alright, come on up, buddy. You can drive. I'll be $20 cash, buddy. What's up? What's your name? Lucas. Nice to meet you, Lucas. Have a seat. So where are you from Oregon, you said? You living on Oregon now? Yeah, yeah I'm from Oregon. Well, I'm well, watch out, sir, real quick. She's going to take a picture real oh, quick here. Yeah. Well, thank you, babe. Hey, Lucas, look over here. Say fromage. That's cheese in French. Ready, oh, fromage? Yeah. There you go. Good. Oh, right. oh, does he? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> hey, Lucas, are you a Richard to go by any chance? It's an absentee down there. Republic of Cambridge, where it's yeah, left wing, right. liberal employees. A place that Richard Nixon lovingly called Moscow on the Charles. Yeah. Home to the first same sex marriage in the United States. And here later, the first same sex divorce. Home well, to all kinds of biotech research up past these buildings. You have Genzyme, Genentech, Biogenidec, all cutting edge gene therapy going on over here. Looking for cures multiple sclerosis, Crohn's disease, cerebral palsy. Oh. Trying to squeeze, strangle cancer for a source and cure all time. So, How's it going up there, Lucas? Pretty good? All right. Well, guess what? You get a sticker for driving. You get a couple of stickers. How about that? Here we go. They're not scratching the step. They smell like a white duck. Here. All right. Who else wanted to drive over here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
MIT over on the right, Millionaires in Training, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. That green glass building, 80 acres of campus all the way down the river. 38 astronauts graduated out of MIT. Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon. Wow. The guy invented the Bohu stereo system. The guy invented the microwave oven. They have a small nuclear reactor on campus over there. They say it's pretty safe. Hopefully. Hopefully. That's all of IT's campus up there. How's it going, Reagan? There you go. Reagan, you have your license, right? But Boston University is up past the other bridge. Almost every single building over there is all Boston University. Martin Luther King, he got his doctorate in divinity over at BU. He met his wife to be Corinna Scott. She was going to the New England Conservatory. They both met right here in Boston. You see the Sitco Center, the Red Triangle. Look to the left, you can see the lights of Fenway Park out there if you look close. To the right of the tall building, right above the sail out there in the distance. Fenway's lights, Fenway, the oldest major league baseball park in baseball. 1912, it opened up. Yeah, throughout the first pitch was the mayor of the city at the time. His name was Honey Fitzgerald. He was John Fitzgerald Kennedy's grandfather. He threw the first pitch. The first game they played was against the New York Highlanders. So then it became the New York Yankees. They beat him that game, but it wasn't front page news, though, because the Titanic had sank a couple nights before. News of that was just coming out. The Red Sox play the Yankees in London tomorrow. Oh, uh, because, uh, tomorrow? Yeah, I think it's tomorrow. They're doing the flights. Well, they did it yesterday and today. Yeah, so it's, I think it's a 3 o'clock game or a 1 o'clock game. They played in London. That's filled in land though, he's got all those tall buildings. All these feet wide. Remember, it's now 2,000 feet wide, it's 7,000 feet wide. The hat shell, there's a dome over there on the waterfront. That's where the Boston Pops play on the 4th of July. They're already getting ready for the 4th of July celebration. Starting to set up the cameras and the lights and everything. There'll be a couple hundred boats out here next week. The fireworks fire one of the best fireworks in this place in the nation. Then you get this boathouse. If you're going to be boating, it's the oldest public boathouse in the nation. Leonard Neboy, a guy who played Spock in Star Trek. He learned in the sail right there. Remember Spock, right? Nando, Nando? Remember? Wait, was that Morgan? Yeah, that was Morgan. That was Morgan, anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, oh uh, look for your dad, right? Oh, Prosper, look for my brother. Hey, Leonard Nimoy grew up over here, yeah. Leonard Nimoy grew up over here in the West End. He learned how to sail right there. If you watch your tickets, we ask if you want to round your ticket price up to the next call level. We raise money for local nonprofits. I like the community boat house. Bostonian Society. Any kid in Boston under the age of 12 can learn how to sail for $1 here in the city. Learn how to sail for a dollar. Who else wants to try? Who else? Who else? Who else wants to try? Alright, good night. 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 building where the circle window is. Yeah, circle window. That's a Liberty Hotel, a five-star hotel. He used to be able to stay there for free, though, and he used to go to the Charles Street Jail. Oh, now the old jail is at Liberty Hotel. <laughs> they have rooms in there, bars and the windows. They have a restaurant in there called Alibi, and a bar in the old drunk tank called The Clink. There's tables in the jail cells you can eat right inside the jail cells. Beautiful building. If you get a chance to get in there, it's a little pricey, but it's good. So if you stay there, it's an arresting experience. You want to go on the rocks? Let's go on the rocks, ready? Yeah! You could go on the rocks if you wanted to. The wheels are still spinning underneath us. So you can turn right here and go right up out of the water, right over here and get right out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs>
Hey, you want to drive that? Want to drive that? Yeah, come on. All right, Lucas, we're going to switch down again. All right. Good Watch job. Watch your feet down there. Good job, buddy. Where are the cell shorties at? Where are they at? Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see.
on the beaches of Cambridge. All right, let's help this duck out of the water. Everybody lean forward and throw your hands up. You ready? Here we go. Okay, wait a second. One more time. Here we go. Say, so, Matthew, can you jump in the water and see if we get the wheels real quick? I think we lost the wheel. Around anywhere? Oh, we're going to have to back up here. We're going to see. Oh, uh, uh, we don't get the wheels over here. Wait! Throw wheels! Hit the rear wheels! Welcome back to land, everybody! Where's the duck? Thanks, Julian! Just like that, we're out of the water, no problem. There we go. There we go. Alright, we'll slow down a little bit here so you can take some pictures of this beautiful area, folks. Very beautiful area. A boss at the Sand and Gravel Company. We saw that movie The Town and Ben Affleck there. That's where he's working. He was in the Ben Affleck Park. Ben Affleck is from Cambridge. He was a Matt Damon. Ben Affleck's mom just retired as a school teacher here from Cambridge about three years ago. The Tokyo School. Yep, just a few You see all the bridges they built there in the Big Dig, the massive construction project that went on here in the city. Oh, I'm sleeping up there. They tore down the old bridge in town, built the new bridge, built the tunnels underneath the city. They built the new tunnel underneath the harbor, the Ted Williams Tunnel. That's the deepest tunnel in the United States. 90 feet deep, it's deepest. They moved more earth than the Panama Canal, building the tunnels underneath Boston. Yeah, they took the dirt and they made some parks. These parks weren't here 30 years ago. They used dirt from the big dig to fill in this area. You see the bike tracks, bike lanes, little bikes, big biking around here, even in the winter. The snow on the ground. You'll see people on the bicycles, riding that morning commute all bundled up right into the city. So get into Boston faster on your bike, deal with the traffic. Of course, you don't have to pay 50 bucks to park, which is nice. Right, right. Now, out of that park back over there about three years ago, there was a bicycle parade that left out of there. there 120 bicyclists got together and they rode around the city, went down to Harvard Square, rode down over to Boston Common, rode around town. You wouldn't have missed it because they're all naked. It was the fourth annual World Naked Bike Ride in Boston. 120 naked half naked bike riders right around the same street. Some people were a little upset last year because some of the bike riders used to put rental bikes up there. They clean them every once in a while. Maybe we want to bring a wet or something just in case. A lot of crazy college students around, so you never know what you might see here in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to draw attention to bike safety in the whole bitch man or something like that. I don't know that. I don't know that. Paul Revere, the Revolution Revere, rides out to Lexington. He warns the countryside. He warns Sam Adams and John Hancock. They're in hiding at the time. They get away before the Redcoats arrest them. And the next day was a shot heard around the world, April 19, 1775. Men and men, they call this fire on the Redcoats for the first time out in Concord. They chase the Redcoat soldiers back to Boston. The skirmish is going on 19 miles all the way back. And they lay siege to the city. Boston was like an island back then. Around the city. Well, the Tories, Loyalists, and Redcoats are all trapped over at Boston proper. Two months later, there was that battle at Bunker Hill where you see the body be like once again. The colonists dug into the hills up there to get the high ground overlooking old Boston town. The Redcoats spot them the next day, started firing cannonballs over. They lined the cannonballs with tar and pitch, lit the cannonballs on fire, and they burned down almost every home over there in Charlestown. The city burned, the colonists sat tight up on top of the hills. Waves of redcoats started coming over from Boston off their ships and said the lineup is having to march up the hill. So they got closer and closer to the top. They wondered why the colonists hadn't fired on a bit. And said, maybe you get the famous quote, don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. And the colonists didn't have enough ammunition. So they sat up there and they waited, waiting for the redcoats to get close. When they got close enough, they opened up, aimed for the best dress, aimed for the officers. First wave of redcoats smacked back. Second wave swept the sun. Third wave came up and they took the hill. The colonists ran out of ammunition and had to fall back. It was a losing battle. Colonists. It was a moral victory. It proved they could take on the best army in the world. The Redcoats had about 1,100 casualties in that battle. The colonists had about 400. So they would have won if they had enough ammunition. It set the stage for the rest of the American Revolution. Remember Bunker Hill, folks. All right, we're going through Leverage Circle. This is a traffic intersection. This way you have 17 lanes of traffic all coming into one spot. Try to move through this like a Seventeen-time NBA champ. Yay! They're, 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 
they're playing right now. They're playing golf right now. They got knocked yeah, out early out of the playoffs. The Boston Bruins, the six-time <laughs> Stanley Cup winners, they play there on the ice. Almost had this seven. There's some music and events over there too. You might see Siley Myers, a Gaga Lady, or Two You, Fleetback Wood, Randy Arara, and all kinds of stuff. Oh, that's right, Hugh Jackman was in town. Wasn't he singing and dancing over at the, uh, the Wang Theater or something? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can see the other day. We're building a hole in China over here. I don't know. We're trying to get around the tariffs here in Boston or something. Like I saw a guy from Australia walk out of this hole the other day. It's a big hole. <laughs> big crane. There it is. Build another condo here. Oh, wow. Look big parking lot underneath. used to be underwater one time. This is filled in with the top of that beacon hill, the Golden Dome is now. You used to dirt that hill and fill in this back in the 1790s. This whole area. Now they say there was a legend that used to play in the old Boston Garden. The old sports arena used to be over here. It was knocked out in 1996. People used to smoke in the old garden from the 20s. You saw the tower hanging from the ceiling. There was no air conditioning in the old garden. They say there was a legend that used to play in that old sports arena. They say there was a leprechaun that used to play tricks on people. They sometimes during the game, you buy a hot dog or something like that, you put the hot dog down by your seat, and the hot dog would disappear. Your drink would disappear. Sometimes they'd say they'd see the leprechaun up on the roof, up in the rafters. There is a leprechaun. Now the circus used to go to Boston Garden all the time. One year, way back in 1938, at one of the circuses, there was an escape of monkeys. A bunch of monkeys escaped from the circus. They were running around the old Boston Garden for about two weeks. Trying to capture them, they were biting people and everything else. So eventually they said they found all the monkeys, they called the monkeys, and that was it. Well, they didn't because when they tore down the sports arena in 1996, they found one of the monkeys. He wasn't alive anymore, but he'd been living in the Boston Garden for who knows how long, taking people's food, eating popcorn, and watching games. He was a leprechaun, they were talking about him. They might not believe me if you go on YouTube, type in Boston Garden Monkey, I think it's an ESPN produced 3030 documentary. ESPN heard about this rumor. They about 10, 11 years ago, they, they found the guys who tore down the old garden. These guys kept the secret when they found it up on the roof. They found the, the monkey, though. He's like a mummy. He was all cured in yeah. cigarette tar and everything else. And they put him in a shoebox. They take him around the bars down South Boston and Quincy and take pictures of people and hold the monkey. And so it's a true story. It really was this monkey that lived in the garden for years. He was a leprechaun. Everybody was talking about it. You see, sometimes they'd, uh, some of the offices, all the drawers would be opened up, and papers on and everything else. They thought it was a ghost. So it was the monkey. Up ahead of us, we have an example of uh, Jersey Barrier architecture. You had a back of it. It's all coming down though, bit by bit, they're taking it down. It's section. Bit by bit. As we go through this intersection, look off to the left, you're going to see the oldest church in the city and the famous church of the Revolution. The old one church. So they're going to make this one up to warn the countryside, to it by sea or up in it. It's all coming from the center of this area. Six glass structures with a million numbers. That's on each one. Very moving if you go through there. Read the quotes if you get a chance. Oh, this is the marketplace. You have the new Boston Public Market. You want the best Boston cream donut you've ever had? Go in this Boston uh, Public Market and go inside the Union, find Union Square Donuts. They have apple cider donuts in here. A lot of great seafood, all kinds of little snacks, good stuff. Now, there's a lot of old restaurants in this area. Now, you see the Bell and Air Tavern in 1795. There was a Bell and Air Tavern, but it wasn't always in that spot. It closed down for years and years, so it's kind of a newer version. The market's gone. That's the oldest farmer's market in America. But the Union Oyster House, past that white truck over there, the Union Oyster House, the oldest continuously operated restaurant. It has the brown curtains over the window. It's 1826. It's been right over there in that spot. It's in a building that goes back to 1690. It's one of the oldest buildings in the city it's in. There was a time when boats used to pull up behind that building and drop off the goods. All this over here, Quincy Market, Finn Hall, all that was underwater. You look at the old maps. 1740s, they filled in a little bit, they built Fanta Hall in 1746. They were doing a little work on Fanta Hall, clean it up. If you look close, you can see the golden grasshopper weather vane all the way up top, that's a time capsule. The building behind it with all the clocks, that's the Customs House, that was the first skyscraper in Boston. One of the first modern skyscrapers, 1918 it went up, dominated the skyline here for 40 years, it's the Federal Customs House. Now it's a Marriott timeshare, you can buy timeshare every vacation if you want. 
Filled up more than built the marketplace. About 70 shops and restaurants over there. And then filled out all the routes in the inquiry. There's Samuel Adams right out front. Samuel Adams, incorruptible, the original son of liberty. He rallies right inside that building against the tyranny of the crowd. Right up around the back up to the second floor. building over here, the old state house, you see the golden lion and silver unicorn up on top of the building. It's a building built in 1713. You see the lion and unicorn? Right up there. Five, five, Mythical symbols of British royal pop. The royal governor used to run that show here in the colony. Until the Declaration of Independence. It was right on that balcony up there in July 18, 1776 when it came up from Philadelphia. It'd be a horseback right to the people of Boston right on here. Yeah. Always what? The, the, first the very first duck tour? Well, the very first one was in the Wisconsin, in the state of Wisconsin. It was a place called the Delft. It's kind of like a little swampy area and they have a little pond. And that's where they started the first duck tour out there. They don't go through a city or anything, so they still use the old ducks. We had to change the new ducks because the city beats up the vehicles pretty good. So these ducks are actually a little newer. We have one of the old ducks up. But yeah, out there in Wisconsin. In Boston, the first year we did was 1994. We used to have the old ducks in 1984. We had 14 of the old ones. Well, then we had to retire the old ones. We only got one of them left to use the parades. But we have 28 of these modified replicas now. We had 1994 for Boston. We had Declaration of Independence right on that balcony up there, July 18th, when it came up from Philadelphia. A few wars back, 1776. And the Boston Massacre happened right out in front of this building, March of 1770. A bunch of colonists showed up in gangs harassing the Redcoats. And now the Redcoats soldiers opened up on them. Five colonists laid dead and died nine more. First to die was Christmas Adams, a sailor who was half African, half Massachusetts Native American, and then the first part of the American Revolution, Christmas Adams. See this building, the Ames building? That was the tallest building in America for two weeks. Until they built the bigger one in Chicago two weeks later. Oh. You really didn't like it when it opened up because there was no elevator in the building when it opened up. No. If you worked on the 14th floor, you had to walk you all the way up. You had to walk all the way up. Now look around, see if you can find a giant golden tea kettle. I'll give you a hint, it's on the right. It's about to get steaming if you look close. It's about there since 1883. City Hall's over there too. That might be our office one of these days. Yeah. Hey, Dunkin' Donuts there. They changed their name to Dunkin'. They get a little uh, more health conscious. Now they have the tuna fish donut and stuff. And the, uh, the oldest burial ground in the city, King's Chapel Burial Ground. Mary Chilton is buried here. Mary Chilton is one of the pilgrims who braved the seas. Landed in Plymouth, which is buried up here in Boston. Mary Chilton. King's Chapel Church is a bell in this church that was made by Paul Revere, the largest bell ever made. It's over 2,000 pounds. Parker House, that's what they invented Boston Creek Pie. Parker House Rolls. Yeah. the Beantown Club to get a cold Sam Adams brew, sit at the windows, give a toast to a cold Sam Adams. It's buried right across the street. Sam Adams' final resting place right there. We see the green drop on that side. Paul Revere is buried out in the back. With those people standing back there, that's Paul Revere's final resting place. Wow. Benjamin Franklin's parents are buried here. He's buried down in Philadelphia. Ben Franklin was born in Boston. Ben Franklin born in Boston. He's got a lot of famous quotes. One of his most famous quotes is that beer proves that God loves us and wants us to be happy. He said, wine is for wisdom and water is for bacteria. And <laughs> they say there's over 3,000 plus people buried in this burial ground. In fact, they don't know for sure how many people are actually in here. They say the caskets are stacked on top of each other, four high in spots. People couldn't afford tombstones, they just stack on top of somebody else. But there's pompous pits, there's tombs in the walls all around. You walk around here during the day, look at the old tombstones, the old engravings. Well, watch out, some people have fallen into sinkholes that have developed, so the old caskets have given way over time. 2008, somebody fell into a crypt over here. They're walking on the grass down by the Paul Revere Monument. The ground broke through. They fell into the crypt. Oh. Well, thigh high. There are no bodies involved, luckily. Oh. Stick to the path, so please, watch your step. Yes. Oh. oh, yeah. Bad oh. Enough. This is John Hancock's monument in Stoopstone in the light over there. First yeah. signer of the Declaration of Independence. First governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, John Hancock. Oh. Oh. All the way up, there's the Golden Dome. One more time. Oh, look at the Golden Dome. Fire truck, oh, oh, going up the yes. Good eye, yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> common, a common ground for the common man here. This is the first public park set aside in North America for public use, 1634. 
Sam Adams wasn't playing frisbee around here. It was mainly used as a cattle ground so cows and goats could graze around here as a city filled up with right. They had space for the cows and the goats to graze. He Look down to the left down this way. Look down there and see there's downtown crossing. There's a lot of people in the old Filene's basement building is still opening. Not tired of the duck door yet? Not good. All those back. The Freedom Trail right over here, the Visitor Center. You see people dressed up like colonists around town giving tours. Right over here is where it starts. Right underneath this are subway tunnels. Boston subway system is the oldest subway system in North America. The fourth oldest subways in the world are from London, Glasgow, Budapest, you have Boston subways. They run like the old subway systems in North America do. They're breaking down all the time. Tracks catching fire. I don't even know what happens. At least we got it. At least we got it. Yeah, we had to race to New York City to see if you could build the first subway tunnel back in 1897. We just did it by a month. Get it Great documentary now. I think. Get on Netflix and see an American Experience PBS documentary. It's called The Race Underground. Yeah, they have old film. This street back in 1895, 1896, loaded with horses, pulling carriages, and everything else. But there was a massive snowstorm that happened when they shut down the city. They said this have put it underground. Chinatown's down this way. Some of the best food in the city down Boston's Chinatown. Go down there, get some little lobster dumpling. Got like homemade dumpling or something. You want to say lobster and mandarin Chinese? I mean, lobster and mandarin? It's Hongxia. Hongxia. Means dragon shrimp. <laughs> yeah. Hongxia. That's cool stuff. That's what she said. That's what she said. The burial ground, the central burial ground, over 200 British soldiers buried there for the Battle of Bunker Hill. There's also a painter buried there named Gilbert Stewart. You might not know who Gilbert Stewart is, but you know what he painted? He painted the portrait of George Washington that's in the one dollar bill. But when he died, he died without a buck on him. If he died poor and penniless, he couldn't even afford a tombstone. It's in a park grave or something like that. Yeah. Didn't have a buck. Like he died. What was his name again? Gilbert Stewart. Gilbert Stewart. Yeah. When did he die? Ooh, I don't know. I think it was somewhere around the 18... 20s, 1819, maybe even 1810, because he painted George Washington, and George Washington was 1790s, 1770, so it's like... Well, I think he just, uh, he got sick. Yeah, he, he, was, he, was, he was getting up there in age, so, you know, when he got sick. But, yeah. but he had a good life, he painted George Washington, so that's pretty good, you know. Edgar Allan Poe was born here in Boston. There's a statue of him off over there, best guy with a black shirt. Born in 1809, he thought Boston stunk, because back then when he lived over here, this used to be swamps and marsh before they filled it all in. It was this was a bad end of town. So there's so many burial grounds over here in this end of the city because it was cattle grounds, graveyards, and there was you know some people lived over here. This is the nasty end of town. People dumping trash out here and wasting the water. Big cesspool. They say for years the old back bay. The city started really filling up. There you go. The other districts back over there. All kinds of shows going on all that time. The local Wang, Schumann Theater, Couple Majestic. Saigon is playing right now over at the uh, Opera House. We got the uh, Sheer Madness takes place in a hair salon, the longest running theatrical comedy in the United States history. We've played here in Boston for over 37 years. That's a lot of fun. And all the different trees here in the public garden. See if you can spot the California redwood tree. And just a little bit. That's a tree. have a little California redwood in here. Look down to the left. This is the reddish wood. There's a lot of dirt around. See the California redwood? This is the baby ducks again. The kids book Big Wave and Ducklings. This is Mallet over there with Jack, Cack, Black, Mac, Knack, Quack, Pack, and Quack. Yeah. Remember the names of this? Jack, Cack, Black, Mac, Knack, Quack, Pack, Quack. It's like the Aww. alphabet. J, K, L, M, N, Q. Play it. A lot of bars and taverns all around. There's a bar over here. They might even remember your name. It's called Cheers. Cheers. Hey. Downstairs, like they did in the show. There's a bar downstairs, but it doesn't look anything like the TV show. Uh, it's just the outside using the show. Everything on the inside is filmed on Hollywood. Upstairs is kind of a half replica. There, you might see clips in there. You might say I don't know or something. But they filled all this in. They planted these beautiful brownstone buildings. Tom Brady, the New England Patriots, used to live right down the street. Who loves Tom Brady? Everyone really loves Tom Brady. Oh. Yeah, Tom, 
down there, 310 Beacon Street. Top two floors, they just had one of the top two floors on these grounds, so this is a four bedroom. I'm not sure what the square footage was, but they had a big rooftop deck and gardens overlooking the river. They sold it in 2014. They didn't get what they wanted for it, though. They wanted 11 million for it. They only got 9.8 million. Oh, poor thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, have to do that commercial or something. Yeah. We're not the championship next year. You might buy a $5 million two bedroom condo here in the back, but you might not get a parking spot to call your own. You might have to fight with everybody on the side of the road. Resident practice. Sometimes you get lucky down these alleyways, and you might get a spot that comes along with the apartment or the condo or the mansion, but most of the time you don't. Now down this alleyway, there were two spots that went up for sale. Somebody owned the two spots, all right, they were leasing them out, renting them, then they decided to sell them. They had an auction for them, they started the bidding at $150,000. The bidding ended at $586,000 for two parking spaces, right up there. 586 Look off to the left, don't miss him, General George Washington. On his horse, the man who liberated this city from British rule when he got the cannons. Henry Knox, about a year after the Battle of Bunker Hill, Washington came up with the content army, got the cannons, set them up, and got kicked the British out of Boston. End of the scene. There's a dog redwood tree from China over there. See the, the guy sitting on the bench? And there's a dog redwood from China. It's floating over here. It's a type of sequoia. Here's Newberry Street, Boston Trodeo Drive and Fifth Ave. Yeah, all kinds of high-end shopping. Tiffany. Dolce Gabbana, Jail, Blueberry, Cartier, Armani, Manja, Manja, Manja. Further up, you go a little cheaper again. You go further up, you have uh, Salvation Armani and TJ Maxx. Uh, churches. The Emmanuel Church. Some people say it looks like a beehive with all the little windows. Then you have the Church of the Covenant coming. Church of the Covenant, over here on the roof. <laughs> Church of the Covenant. It's made out of uh, the State Rock of Massachusetts. It's the State Rock it's made out of. It's not Aerosmith or the Dropkick at Murphy's. It's called Pudding Stone. Yeah, they dug up this rock. It was a local kind of rock, lumber rock. When they dug it up back in the day, they cut it up into blocks, and they said it looked like blocks of bread pudding. So they called it Pudding Stone. You see a couple of churches made out of the Pudding Stone right here. Bunch of Tiffany stained glass windows all around. You get a chance to see the doors open, go inside, give them a little donation, go inside, and see what they said. Absolutely gorgeous. All kinds of shops, cupcakes, joy shop cupcakes, cupcakes, all kinds of cafes. Nice little spots. Atlas, Ralph Check out your family's history in the New England Genealogical Society. Oh, oh there's the Mayflower, look at it. There's the Mayflower. Wow. The native, that funny? The, the Mayflower has been under renovation for the last couple of years. Her anniversary, the 400th anniversary of the Mayflower at Plymouth Landing there is in uh, two years, well, next year. So they get it all set up, so Plymouth down there, you can make a ride down there. I think it might be back. Yeah, it's a great place of chocolate over here. It's Burdick's Chocolate. Asking for the iced chocolate. It'll cost you about six bucks. It's a, a secret menu item. Iced chocolate. It'll take you about two hours to finish the thing. It's so rich. It'll give you a buzz like you want to believe it. It's good stuff. This guy dancing over here. He's having a good time. Yeah. All right, back to Copley Square. Copley Square is named after a painter, John Singleton Copley. You go to the Museum of Fine Arts up the road, you'll see a few of his paintings and painted portraits of uh, John Hancock, Sam Adams, Margaret Gage. Paul Revere, he did that painting of Paul Revere where he has his hand on his chin looking at the silver teapot. It's a Copley right. portrait. Yep. That's the Trinity Church. They just got a new air conditioning system. They didn't want to put a box up on top of the building for air conditioning or anything along the side. So what they did is they right over here they drilled a hole down about three quarters of a mile deep down to the ground. Down to the granite. Right down there, it's always about 60 degrees all the time down there. So what they do is they pump in hot air during the summertime, it cools it off. Right. And then in the wintertime they do the same thing. They pump the cold air down and it actually warms it up. So it's geothermal air conditioning that they have for this, yes, for this church. Just read the log too. They, they, they did the hole right here. All 
Hancock say hi to yourself and take a picture of yourself while you take a picture of yourself because the Hancock reflects all the old buildings, all the old ducks on around. We're going to wave, guaranteed to wave back here. Yeah. Hey, I'm Julia. Where's the tea filibuster? Cuba duck. Oh, it's right over there. Right over the hills. See that tower over there? That tower was leaning. They built this, the old South Church over there, built in 1875. By 1906, though, the tower started to lean. It was leaning by about four feet. They had to take the whole thing down and rebuild it smaller. The whole thing fell over there. Look at the lions on front of the Fairmont Copley Plaza Hotel over here. See if you can spot the doggy house behind the lions. Kylie Copley, the mascot, she's a black lab. She might be inside there. She lives over there. I don't know if I'm going to Oh, no, I remember. Oh. Did America run in the lounge? Yes. Did they really? Yeah, yeah it was great. Okay. I was very young at that time. <laughs> 40 now, 42? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> the library, now if you get a chance, I highly recommend to go inside the library. It's absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful inside. Made it be like a palace of Venetian. Girls on the ceiling by John Singer, Saturday Night, what have you. They have a, a great cafe in there too. It goes, you know, goes to the library. They even serve beer and wine in there. You get beer and wine in the library. But then right in the middle is a courtyard, an open air courtyard with fountains. You won't even know you're in the middle of the city. You feel like in the Game of Thrones, right in the middle of the thing. Stop. Once again, my name is Worcester T. Filibuster, all right? Worcester T. Filibuster. If you can't remember my name during the next election, just remember my initials, WTF. You'll not remember. There you go. Oh, thank you. Get bank contributions. Yeah. Well, I'm going to pull it out, let you in nice and safe. Make sure you have everything. We have a lost and found online called eBay, just in case you lose it. Check that out. There's bathrooms inside the marketplace in the Star Park. Go in the back of the Star Park by the Wine Island restaurant. Bed. We're going to the Human Hampshire Tunnel up ahead of us, going to the mall over there, the restaurants and they all kind of shops, things like that. Sit tight now, while we pull in here, Julia and I are going to get off first, we're going to go back there and lay down the ladder, which up nice and safe, watch your stuff coming down. Once again, everybody, welcome to Boston, thanks for coming down, folks, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Have a good thing. All right, hold on one second, I'm going to squeeze in here, the panel up, park that duck here, here we go. All right, look here, I'm going to look back here for you, keep an eye out. Hay colega Valeria Nocta, eh, Vázquez.